Hey everyone, this is a caricature of, um, what's his name? Maybe I should start like, maybe I should do some homework before I start recording. Hugh Hug Jackman. Anyways, this is the guy who plays the Wolverine character in X-Men. I read on Wikipedia before I started doing anything, I read that he's best known for that. I don't know, I think it was said because he played that acting role the most, or that was the longest one he's played, but I just went ahead and did it that way. That's the only uh, acting acting thing or character that I remember him playing in anyways. Um, so, I, I saw the cartoons, I, I ne didn't necessarily see the movies, I haven't seen him act in them. My wife wants to go see it, I think there's a new one out, so I'll go take her to watch it. Either when it comes out or maybe it's already out. But anyways, what I remember him in, uh, in X-Men, he has like anger problems, anger issues. Or he, he has a hard time controlling his like anger and hatred. And when he gets angry, he kind of lashes out. So that's what I remember. And of course he has these huge like claws or whatever. So I went ahead and, you know, drew him in that, in that scene with, uh, that type of anger, I wanted to I wanted to capture him in his anger uh, fit that he does. And the best way I figured out would be to have him yelling. Um, so I just try to find, I tried, I tried to find like different poses of him being very angry, upset. Uh, so I have like five or six pictures. And then I have one without him in that character on my screen. I have him just kind of as regular. I still, I still have him with that beard on him, though. Uh, but the other ones have him with his claws out. He's angry. He's gnashing his teeth. And then I have one with, like, a profile. And then I have, like, a quarter view, and most of them are just front view. So uh, I didn't see any videos. I probably should have. Uh, but as soon as, I, as soon as I figured out that I would draw him in Wolverine, I just went right to the sketching. I, I kind of had it already envisioned, and then I went right for it. I usually start with the small thumbnails. But this is just 8 and a half by 11. Um, there I am drawing the tongue. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to place it. I started, to, I started to put it, as you can see, kind of in the middle of the mouth. And then I figured, well, tongues aren't really placed that way. They're kind of placed down. So I just stuck it down lower. <clears throat> the eye, I drew it really small. And then eventually I, I, I enlarge it. I'm trying to remember what was going through my head. It's kind of hard when this thing goes fast like this. Um... I'm drawing the nose. I'm kind of curling it up. Let me see. Like when someone gets angry like a bull, you usually can see their nostrils. They kind of flare up, right? So I wanted to make sure his nostrils were showing. Um, <coughs> you see his hair, uh, the left side, like I guess his bangs or whatever on the left side, the one that's right above his, his eyebrow. I go ahead and erase that eventually because... I have him lunging forward, and if he's doing that, that means his hair is going to be like cocked back. It's going to be pushing back or flowing backwards. There's not really going to be any hair going forward. So I, I went ahead and erased that. Um, as you can see, the, the beard kind of goes up. Uh, I try to make sure his beard and his hair is kind of sharp at every point. Because he has these sharp claws and, you know, his, his muscles are very, like, sharp and he's very cut and well built. And um, I went ahead and extended that into his beard and his hair. I kind of made it very angly. <coughs> Compared to the, you know, the, the other, which is making someone very round. I think last week we, had, we drew that girl and she was very round. So a lot of, when I drew her, I think I made some soft, round shapes. But this one... He's full of sharp angles, so um, I just went ahead and added that exaggeration in his beard. Um, later, as you're going to see, I, I went ahead and just connected the beard with the hair, which eliminated the, I eliminated the, the ear. And then towards the very, very end, I, I just added the ear on the, on the right side of that beard, where it kind of flares up a little bit. I just stuck it at the side, or stuck it at the very back. Um, it looked it looked okay, and uh, one of the things with this style, when you're creating stuff, you you have to look at the reference pictures and kind of 
Imagine how they feel in I don't know I don't know I don't know if I want to say cartoon world, but I want to kind of say you have to create them and how you would interpret them in a, in a, in a caricature. <clears throat> uh, I guess the opposite the best way to explain is that the opposite the opposite style would be like in a realistic caricature. Um, a realistic caricature style uh, incorporates exaggeration and they could even go extreme exaggeration. Especially like in the eliminating things, they could they could do that. But what a realistic caricature artist does is they um, they take, for example, a nose and they they make it huge, they enlarge it, but they keep the shape of the nose identical to the reference picture. So the nose stays the same, the the amount of pores stay the same. Everything is identical. If they make the eyes large, like huge, and they like take out the nose and add something else, that eye that they've enlarged in a realistic caricature style, that eye does not lose its shape. It's at the same angle. It has the same amount of eyelashes. It's identical to the reference picture. So <clears throat> in a realistic caricature style, everything stays the same. The, the not the proportions, but the the size of the eyes, the size of the, all the features, everything stays the same. The only difference is the 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 size of it or the exaggeration. Uh, <coughs> the relationship stays the same, I would say, in most cases. But the sizes are enlarged. So if you enlarge something, you have to shrink something else down. But the the shape of everything stays the same. So uh, the only reason I bring that up is because I'm with this style. I'm doing like the opposite. It's a more of more of creative stuff. You're, I'm kind of creating um, features that are, that aren't in the reference picture. I'm looking at the reference picture. I'm trying to uh, see what's unique and different. But I I I kind of create some things uh, and I change a lot of the things um, because that's the way I think it feels. For example, the eye. <clears throat> in the sketch, uh, well, you can't see it now, but you see those fangs in his teeth. He didn't have fangs, but that's how I, I kind of feel how he looks like. So I just added the fangs. Uh, but the eyes, you can see, I kind of tilted them upward, like really high. I tilted them. And he doesn't have, like, tilted eyes. They're not, like, they, they don't go up that way. But the only reason I did it is because I wanted to give those eyebrows more of a lift. Um... And when I did that, it gave him more of a mean look. Um, and it lifted up those eyebrows much more. So those type of things, for example, is, is, uh, is, is, is one style. <coughs> now, to, tell you, to let you know what just happened, I, I should have stopped with black and white. With, with, the, with the black and white sketch. I really liked it and I should have stopped right there. But I wanted to color it, and I was lazy at the same time. So I said, well, I'm not going to watercolor because I'm lazy. Uh, I'll just get some Prismacolors, and I'll try it out on a few, in a, like on a scratch sheet. And that's what I did. I just made some circles, and I added some Prismacolor on top of the pencil, and I thought it looked okay. And boy, was I wrong. And when I went ahead and added the Prismacolor on the pencil sketch, I ruined it. And halfway through it, I decided, well, I'm just going to use it as a test color uh, sketch sheet. And I just went ahead and just threw a bunch of Prismacolors on it and tested out the yellow and pink. And just want to see how it looked because at that time, halfway through, I knew I realized, I realized that I ruined the black and white sketch. And now I have to do something different. So I decided to do watercolor. <coughs> so I went ahead and just tested a bunch of colors on it and I, I tested how this color looked with the beard and just I tested the yellow on the skin and the yellow didn't look good and all these other things <clears throat> in fact when I put the yellow on his skin on the pencil sketch I started to realize that he started to look like that guy from Thundercats uh, it was a that's a cartoon that I used to watch when I was a kid so I didn't want to do that and I when I went ahead and did the watercolor on the Yupo paper, I decided to just stay away from yellow at all costs. Even though, like, his skin is, is pretty yellow, and he looks a little tan, but I think, I think it's because of all the hair he has. 
which reminds me, after I finish recording, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to add all his hair. I forgot to do that. But yeah, he is very hairy, and it might, I, it's, I, I think he has a lot of brown hair on his body. But that's what kind of makes him look tan. But he's not. So I decided to, I decided to add a bunch of pink, just pale pink on his flesh so that way he doesn't look like to me at least look like that uh, Thundercats guy um, but um, let me see what haven't I mentioned <coughs> uh, I need to get new bulbs in this office in this little room here because the bulbs are like a soft white and I hate that it's I, I like the blue that real color blue um, so anyway so I apologize for the the yellow tint in the video but that's a close-up of what I'm doing with the five o'clock shadow it stays wet so I'm able to put some drops of water and it gets those little white dots and then just move on to something else and it and it just dries like that so uh, that's how I got the beard <coughs> But that spot right there towards the bottom of that beard and those towards the bottom parts, uh, in the middle, it's still kind of wet. So it takes about 30 minutes or so, at least that that part did, to dry. It took a long time. I was able to go eat and stuff. and So it takes a long time to dry, especially when you add a bunch of water. And the mouth, the inside of the mouth, that, that, uh, that maroon and that purple and pink and red, all those colors, that area took a good 30 minutes also to dry. Um, it's dry right now on my paper, but it took about 30 minutes to dry. Because um, when you add so much water, it just sits on the surface and the paper doesn't absorb it. So it just, it, you know, you have to, it just, you have to wait and be patient and move on something else uh, while it dries. But the good thing is you can start adding, you know, you add the finishing colors, you can add the darks. The dark areas you can add more water to lighten up some areas and you can work with it as it's still wet and that's that's the fun part the reason the main reason I chose to draw him with his mouth open kind of yelling and thrusting forward is because that I think that fit his personality um, I'm sure there's other ways to capture that I didn't I know I didn't do it the best way uh, but that's just that's just kind of like it fit his mood and when you're doing caricatures, you want to make sure to look at their personalities, see how the person talks, how they conduct themselves, what are they known for, uh, who are they, and what, 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 what unique things, what, what kind of things do they do that set them apart from the average person? What are, what are some unique personality characteristics that, that they might have? And that will guide like the pose you do and the reference picture you choose and all these other things. Um, that you incorporate in the caricature. So if I was doing a caricature of my grandmother, I wouldn't have her with her mouth open. I wouldn't have her yelling and screaming, and because she's not angry, she's not. She that's not her personality. Uh, I saw a caricature last year of the MythBusters, and the person did them with their mouth open and yelling. And I'm sure there was a reference picture for that, but I don't know if that fit their mood. I don't know if it fit their TV show either. They do crazy stuff on there, but as far as the personality. Uh, I don't think he's a yelling type of person. So that's just one example, probably not the wisest thing. The wisest thing is to kind of check out their personality, see how they talk, and then incorporate that, incorporate their personality in the caricature. Because uh, you're drawing the person. You're not kind of drawing them how you think they should be acting, but how they do act. So anyways, hope you enjoyed.